So, Megan, welcome to Breaking Part. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. So, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, you're, you have a, I've seen some of the stuff that you've posted on, on, uh, on Facebook and, uh, when you're at the PGA show and talking about different things and stuff like that. And uh, it's great to see someone your age being real enthusiastic and jumping out there. I know that your age group is a lot involved in social media in general, but it's great to see you using it on a professional basis and being able to uh, let people know what's out there and helping grow the game of golf through that media. Um, That's a lot what I try to do too. Um, old enough to be your father, not your grandfather, but at least your father. <laughs> and, uh, and I try to get real social anyway, because I'm one of those techie kind of people. Um, but, but that's awesome to see. So tell me a little bit about, um, about how long you've been doing this and what really got you involved in starting to become a golf instructor. Well, um, I graduated from Penn State University and I know you're based out of Pennsylvania, yeah. so I I just loved that college, and it was a great experience. I went out there to play on the women's golf team, and I also majored in golf management. And I think a lot of people aren't aware that that's actually an opportunity to major in the study of golf so that you can become a golf professional. And I'm just so thrilled that I did it. It was a great experience, and I loved going to college there. Uh, but really, that kind of led me into uh, being on the East Coast business and, and specifically into teaching. But I graduated in 2008 and just decided, you know, you get to a crossroads. Do I want to continue to play and try to make a living playing or do uh, what's my next step? And for me, it definitely was my passion of sharing the game with others. So it's interesting, you know, that you bring up the social media because I find that that's a great way to reach a large group of people. And and when it comes down to it, it's really about growing the game and uh, connecting with other professionals. So you'll see a lot of teamwork out there on on the social media platforms of people doing their best to spread the word on how great of a game it is that we play. Yeah, I totally agree. And I know that on Facebook, there's a lot of groups of golf professionals. And I, what I love about that is that they can share information and bounce ideas off each other and learn from each other. And I think, and that's a big reason why I have this podcast is so when I have guests like yourself on other, other professionals who are maybe involved in the, in the, in the business and starting or professionals who are seasoned can get a different take on different types of things from different different professionals and how they do it and broaden their horizons. And that also helps grow the game too. Yeah. And, and I know that for some people it can be a scary thing doing uh, a new experience like using social media and, and really uh, there's a learning curve there to when you're first starting to use it. But what I would suggest for people that don't have a Facebook platform, for example, would be to join it just so that you can be a part of some of those great groups uh, you know, and start with that and really you'll benefit very quickly learning from other people and, and there's specific areas for everything, really. I mean, I'm, I'm part of uh, groups that are specifically just for females in the golf business and then, and then groups for teaching professionals and putting specific instructors. So it's, it's a great uh, resource and definitely one where I learn all the time from, from fellow professionals on Facebook. So it's fun. Yeah, I I totally agree. And I think too, that when you said about people being scared, um, the way that they can look at it is, uh, pretty much nobody knows you when you start this. Um, so Mm -hmm. it's okay to make some mistakes because there's not a lot of ton of people who are seeing you make these mistakes. Um, and then as you grow bigger, you kind of learn it and you don't make those mistakes anymore. So now that you're on a wider platform and more people are seeing you, you're kind of got your feet wet by then, and and you feel pretty good about it. So, uh, so tell us a little bit about about where you're teaching and uh, and the type of student base that you're working with right now. Well, um, I really am kind of like where's Waldo. It's it's that's another thing about <laughs> Facebook that's good for me is I could say on there, 
you know, this is where I am, this is what I'm doing. So it gives my students uh, a chance to really see the great opportunities that have come my way and, and continue to stay in touch with me. And one of those is that I'm an Aimpoint Express instructor. So I teach the new green reading method that you may have seen used on tour where the players are holding up their fingers to see how much break there is. And uh, with that, in order to teach it, you have to be a certified instructor. And uh, Mark Sweeney is the founder of Aimpoint. So he has certified a group of instructors across the country. And so what I've done is, is it's given me the opportunity to team up with different clubs all over the country. And uh, we'll team up with private clubs, public courses, anyone to bring this system to their membership and to their guests. And it's really neat because it's a teamwork thing. It, it doesn't take away from anybody's business by us coming to teach it. It actually generates a, a higher level of golf instruction. So people get really excited about practicing their putting. And uh, in, when you have the correct line, it, it really shows you some other flaws that could be happening in the putting stroke. So uh, some maybe speed issues come out or alignment um, aiming issues and then uh, of course obviously you start to understand what the stroke is doing based on uh, where someone's trying to make their ball go so it's been really neat to be able to share that but I'm actually based out here in Hilton Head area uh, in Bluffton South Carolina and I'm at a club called Belfair Plantation and that's my home club here and then uh, in the summer months, I go up to East Hampton, New York to Maidstone Club. And it's a beautiful club there. I've been there for about eight summers. And uh, I, I primarily work with the kids when I'm up there. And, and they really keep me busy. And we have a great time. But, uh, but in between this year, I really have been on the road most of the time bringing Aimpoint to different clubs and, and helping team up with other professionals so well, it's that's a neat opportunity. Oh yeah, absolutely, and it's it's um and and because uh you you are young, it's traveling is is it's not like you have your you have a family or you have to drag everybody with you. So so that makes it a lot easier on you and and I guess your family. Yeah. Um So so that that way you can you can kind of bring this information this expertise to other people and and spread the word and help them. Um, and I understand how. Two, I'm similar with that with another putting situation. It's um, the putting zone, which is very similar to that. Um, so a lot of the same things parallel. Um, it's just uh, brought together by a gentleman named Jeff Mangum, who we were actually discussing um, a little bit before we went on the air. And, uh, and his methods are very similar to that. There's a few different things, but both of them, uh, he doesn't have quite as wide of a recognition due to the fact that aim point is is they're showing that stuff on pga events um and lpga events and they're showing that green reading system and uh because it's a software that uh, they use on there to tear everything you know just to, to see the path and everything yeah. so which yeah, is I really would definitely cool. say you know i've i i think he has a huge recognition in in the golf world and he's definitely someone that you know i'd love to spend more time around and and clearly has uh proven his method in how he goes about it. The important thing, regardless of any system that you use, and I just worked with a gentleman today, it, it is to have a system. It's to have something that you can decide and commit to. And, and that's really uh, underrated, is that people wonder what's going on, but if they're, if they're sitting over a putt and don't have any decision or commitment, that's, that's the first thing that needs to be addressed. You need to have some sort of a plan going into it or else you just can't expect to get better. I, I really believe that if you don't have a process that will allow you to decide and commit every putt that you hit, you're actually going to make yourself a worse putter. If you have a process that you're following, and especially if it gives you the correct line, now every putt you hit is going to be making you a better golfer. I totally agree with that, and I think that that's true in all aspects of the game, is that... Um, you know, if you kind of step in there to make a shot and you really don't know what you're looking at or where you want the ball to go or you don't have a process that you go through in your pre-shot routine or preparation for the shot, then what's the odds of you get, getting that ball to where it needs to be? It's, it's very low. Um, so that's true. I, I agree that process is a huge part of uh, being able to execute. Mm-hmm. 
Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Very absolutely. underrated. <laughs> Extremely underrated. So I know that I always, uh, um, the one of the biggest things that I do with my students is always make sure that in their first couple of lessons that they have a pre-shot routine and that they're doing it consistently the same way all the time. Yeah, And then we move on to little other things that are nuances to try to fine tune their swing and things of that nature. So you mentioned that you're working with a lot of juniors in the summertime. So uh, the programs that you're doing with them, is it more uh, group programs or coaching type situations uh, or like an overall coaching groups or is it more individual type things, or is it a combination of both? Yeah, you know, I would say when it comes to growing the game, it's important at any level or any operation really to have a menu of offering that connects with everyone. So I would say that we have a little bit of everything. I definitely try to strive for more of a coaching atmosphere uh, where they're continuously coming to work with us and we believe in really developing an athlete that is a good person. <laughs> we want to develop the individual and really give them the qualities and, and the learning lessons from golf. So we really try to make that our focus is the values that the children are getting and really uh, just seeing what life lessons we can come out of it. To us, obviously, we would love for them to be great golfers, but really my my passion and I think my strength is getting kids to fall in love with the game and just have a ton of fun you know so we definitely focus on the technique end of it too but we understand that it's a development over time that as kids grow they change and so the thing that it, at the root of it is is we like to develop the heart and the passion for it um, along with developing an athlete that can do anything that we ask them to do. Sure. So I know that um, in my junior programs, because I do a lot of junior stuff in the summer too, and I think the main reason for that is because juniors are off all summer and they have that opportunity to take advantage of that. And um, I know that for me, number one is those life lessons. Uh, and, and because, you know, it's funny, but golf is the one sport that they really have to call all those penalties on themselves. They really have to account for themselves. Um, and they really have to be, uh, you know, fair sports with other people and things like that. And, and all those things kind of translate into the way they should be in life too. And it's a great way for them to learn those lessons and take them off the golf course into life. And then still, as you said, um, learn to love the game and, and then take that through life with them. Um, as they as they start to grow and and turn into young adults and then young men and women and then use those same uh, basically uh, standards that they've implied in the game and use those in their in their lives and it, it helps form uh, good solid young men and women uh, who can go out into the world and have good good quality of uh, of, I guess I want to say moral standards and and of of just overall outlook as to how to how to act how to treat other others um, and and how to just be a good person I think golf is a big part of that I think it makes a lot of, of good people I know that for sure with me I've met tons of great people in this sport who are involved in this sport there, there really are just all around just really good people who are genuine and care about each other yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's the thing is that the game has given me so much in my life and has been such a big part of, of what I do. And it's interesting because I think, wow, if, you know, if, if we didn't start playing, and when I say we, I mean my brothers and myself and my dad, if we didn't start playing, you know, years ago when my brother went over, we went over as a family to Scotland and he got to watch John Daly in the playoff and for the British Open, and it was so exciting, and mm. and he ended up taking his first lesson over there. And I just think about it. Gosh, if we didn't start that time, and if we didn't end up playing golf, what would I be doing right now? It's just, you know, I I personally wouldn't even want to know because <laughs> it was just it's been such a big part of my life, and the people that I've connected with over time, and the opportunities it's led to. That for me, it's like I just want to share that with other people. Well, I think that's a big part of your personality, too. I think that you fit right into the mold. 
um, as personality wise. Uh, you're you're very professional, and um, and and you, you can see that there's passion in what you do, and that you really care, and that you really try to do your best to help other people. Um, enjoy the game and and do things like that. Now let's move into a little bit about technology, mm-hmm. and and because I know that right now technology is the big buzzword in golf, and uh, some people are are for it. Some people are. There's always someone who's going to be against technology or scientific based things, um, and uh, and. So what is your take on that? What do you think about technology in the game and how it's affecting the game and how it's affecting players? And, and do you use any technology in the things that you do? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, there's some awesome pieces of technology. I'm definitely for it. It's one of those things where, you know, we have to do our best to keep up with the technology and uh, it's going to continue to evolve uh, that is the other part of it is that it's quickly evolving. So it's uh, one thing, you know, you can't get too stuck on, on a certain system because it it continues to evolve a measuring system, if you will. So uh, a couple of things that are out there. I mean, one that if you're a golf instructor, if you're not using Edufy, that is, I don't know if you're used to that, but that is a great thing. And in fact, I think it's even good for someone that maybe isn't a golf instructor Edufy is something I use with all my students. Um, it, it allows me to document our lesson, all the summary notes. It's completely free, which is uh, my favorite price to pay. But uh, it's an app where you just, you know, you download it and you create an account with the student. So the way that I think of it is, is it's Facebook between you and your student. So you have a wall and you post on it, whatever you want, and it's only going to be seen by you and the student or whoever you invite. So we'll be using it this summer at Maidstone where I'll have all the coaches in the same group with with a student. So anything related to that student, we can post in there, uh, swing videos, lesson notes, pictures, you name it, it goes into that group. And it's just, it's just a great tool. It's really helped me a lot as a coach to be more organized. Um, and then there's also some, uh, some great statistic uh, technology out there. So that would be uh, Arcos is a new company that's out there where they put something at the end of the grips. Um, Game Golf is another one very similar to that. Those are ones that as you put them at the end of your grip, it will track the different shots throughout the round. So for some people, that, that would be great information for them to see that uh, where are they hitting their shots. And then it gives you a full-on report at the end, which will show, you know, areas that you need improvement and, and areas that, you know, maybe you didn't realize that you were above average in those. But uh, something like that that will really give you uh, kind of a take-home, I think, are really important. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of ones. I have a ZEP. Uh, 3D analysis where you put it on your glove and and those are reasonable things that I even saw it at Verizon the other day when I was out there so right. you can buy them you know anywhere and little things that you can get the feedback from um, at at Belfair we have a trackman system and a flight scope so just ways to measure the stroke and then of course uh, the next on my list that I'd like to get is the Sam Putt lab which will measure uh, the putting stroke to very detailed and give you a ton of information back. But again, a lot of that is information that's helpful for the teacher. And I, I'm not saying that it's not helpful for the student, but here is the thing is that pieces of that will be helpful for the student. Mm. Uh, you, the student doesn't need to know the whole thing sometimes because uh, sometimes what we're trying to do, if it's incorrect is actually what's causing us the problem. So when I teach someone, I always ask them, you know, what are you trying to do? What what's your uh, what's your concept of how to make the ball go in the air? Things like that, and then you'll quickly hear things like, "Oh, you know, I'm trying to keep my head down because everyone says to keep your head down." Well, yeah. it's been proven that that actually hurts somebody's swing. So, um, anyways, that's just little things like that that are kind of common phrases that people say have been proven to be some of the things that are making the game pretty hard for them. So, Yeah, I think that some of the old 
uh, I, what I say to my students is old train of thought or old school train of thought. Um, mm-hmm. At the time when they were based, they, they were founded by the technology that was available at that time. Uh, since then, uh, we've changed with technology that has proven or disproven some of those things. Some of them they've, they've made so that we can see that, yeah, that was true, certain things. Other things we see, no, it's no longer holds true. Um, but that's the same in anything, not just in golf. I mean, if we look at, gosh, the leaps and bounds that have made in dentistry in the, over the past 20-some years, when I was a kid, they didn't have bonding or for your teeth or a way to coat your teeth to stop you from getting cavities. Uh, today, kids, they have that kind of stuff. So it's like I try to explain to people that it's you don't have to go crazy with technology, but you should kind of try to embrace technology and then use it in a way that you're not overwhelmed by it, that it helps you. Um, and I think, too, that as you said with the instructor type thing, uh, how instructors use it. It's almost like the way a doctor uses technology. He doesn't tell his patient everything that, he, that that's on that chart. Um, he doesn't need to. Uh, it's It would probably be overwhelming to the patient. So he just gives the patient some information that, that that patient needs, and then that technology ends up working really well. Yeah, that's a really good analogy. I think that's a perfect way to look at it with the doctor and, and – uh, yeah, I mean, it, with with technology, it it really should be something that we should use as instructors. And one thing that I think is not done enough, and and I think that it's changing in the directions, moving in a different direction, is is a teamwork approach. So I know uh, I try to do it as much as possible, where I team up with another instructor uh, to really bring a new value to students, and then also to learn from the education that you get. So, you know, whether that's, uh, hosting a golf school with a, with a guest instructor or, um, or just doing a, an event together, um, just so that you can pick up some other things. Like I just recently did one, uh, with a girl named Stephanie Shaw down in, she's in West Palm beach. I, I did a, a fundraiser for her in Orlando or not for her, but with her, uh, for the LPGA. And uh, it was called, it was a social media fundraiser. So it was hashtag I Heart Teaching Golf. And uh, we were down in, at Orange County National and uh, we just did an event for juniors. And it was a great way for us to team up and talk about the different ways we work with kids and, and learn a couple new tricks. And it's just always, uh, it's even in a thing like that, it's a fundraiser. You're you're generous. You're doing it out of your generosity. You're, it's for a, a cause. You're still getting a lot out of it when you're learning, you know, some some better ways to become a better teacher. So, um, besides it being just helpful for a great cause, it's also making you a better teacher. Oh, so sure. Something something that you know would be nice if more people did that. Yeah, and it's it's also giving you exposure too to a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. So it's um, all those things. It's it's uh, that's a win 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 all the way around. Um, and Definitely. and I agree. I like the idea of teaming up with other instructors, and uh, because a lot of times they can see things that maybe we don't. Um, they can they can say different things that'll trigger a different idea in in the way that we think. Um, those things are great. So and it's. Uh, so for students out there who are or who are listening to our podcast here, um, how, how do they uh, get in touch with you, and what are the, some of the things that you would usually do with those students when you're doing one-on-one type stuff? So before we get the in touch, I would like to know what is the, what's your normal things that you do with one-on-one type things, and do you do like do you do half-day things? Do you do hourly things? Do you do because everybody does different things. Um, so I'm just curious as to what you do. Yeah, that's a great question. I would say that, you know, like, like we talked about, I definitely have a niche and that's putting instruction and junior golf. But the thing is, is that that's just what brings students to me. I have, uh, like, for example, today I'm doing my aim point clinic and I have someone driving eight hours to come see me for the class and then they'll drive back eight hours. (laughs) Right. Sure. So, uh, that's what brought them to me. But from there, you know, it, it usually will lead into a putting lesson, you know, an individual putting lesson. And then from there, they realize that, oh, wait, she knows how to teach the full swing as well. 
So there's a, I do think it's important to kind of have a specialty area yet know, be knowledgeable in all areas. So even though I say that to people, I do teach the full game. And uh, a big part of what I teach as well is on course playing lessons because you can cover so many things out on the golf course. Yeah. But uh, really, you know, I I think the easiest way to get in touch with me is through social media platforms and Twitter. Uh, my handle's at Megan Golf Pro. So uh, really, it's uh, it's kind of the sky's the limit. I do individual lessons, I do group things, and uh, and then like I said, on course playing lessons. So. Uh, I, I really work it up to the needs of the individuals. Are you are you based pretty much at your home club throughout the uh, the winter months? Is because you said that you moved to you go up to New York in the in the summer. Um, so is that like winter fall type uh, spring type yeah, programs? Yeah, at, at the moment it's it's really just the winter, and then in between my schedule, I'm constantly traveling. But again, social media is the way that people kind of track me down and, and I've had a lot of people, uh, actually through social media, see that I'm coming to their area and then, uh, specifically will come seek me out. But, uh, but yeah, either way, I mean, if, if, you know, I really do think it's, it's a hot item right now are those aim point clinics. So someone could find that on the aim point website, which is just aimpointgolf.com. So essentially because you're moving around a lot, um, or, or you never have too much grass growing under your feet because you're always going <laughs> from one place to the next. Yeah. Um, that that social media uh, that way it's easy. You don't they don't have to physically call a number or um, you know so that you have to be there in order for them to get in touch with you or walk in your door to talk to you or something like that. Yeah. They can just give you a shout out on social media. You can yeah, say, that's hey, I'm definitely. Here, and, yeah, that's definitely the best way would be uh, Facebook or Twitter. So someone can friend me on Facebook or, or shout at me on Twitter. The other thing that I think is the best opportunity for, you know, especially someone that's traveling on the road all the time is uh, Athlete Nation. Yeah. I think for students, that's a really popular one. It's uh, athletenation.com. Uh, I actually just worked with someone the other day that was going down to take a live lesson from someone in Florida that he had been taking online lessons with and it's really easy I actually I do those quite a bit because uh, people that are traveling it's a really easy system to get online lessons and and there's some great coaches on there at, at athletenation.com I agree I'm, I'm on there myself and there we uh, go <laughs> <laughs> I've been on there for I a know. while so started as a yeah. golf channel swing fix instructor uh, and then you know I'm still on there and then I, and then uh, you know with Vicky uh, just on, on to Athlete Nation, and uh, actually just got a call from a student in Missouri today that I that that booked a lesson with me on Athlete Nation, and then um, Vicky Vanderpool sent me five lessons from the Valspar um, yeah. On, yeah. over the weekend. So I have so after we're done this interview, then that's what I'm about to do is finally get to those because I was tied up yesterday and the day before. So I'll I'll uh, I'll knock out all those lessons today and. And, uh, and I agree, it's, it's a fantastic format. It's a great way for people to, who, wherever they are, um, to uh, videotape their lesson, upload, upload it to the site, and then for you to be able to, as an instructor, um, do a video commentary over top of that and tear it all down and give them drills to do. And um, I agree, Athlete Nation is, is, a, is a great thing. And I think a lot more students or people who want to get in touch with different professionals um, should be accessing that that format um, because yeah. it's uh, sometimes you can't find someone to give a lesson in your area uh, that's close to you or that you're that you get along with or that things work out with so it's yeah. um, it's another wonderful alternative yeah, it's a great way to, you know, keep those relationships going and have the students know because at the rate that I am traveling, it it is tough. I'm not there it, at any location with someone year round, but this is a way for me to be able to tell them that, you know, I'll I'll be able to help you at any time and uh it's it's just again another reason why that technology is is so important. Yeah, I think it's great that you're living the dream and uh <laughs> You Thank know, you. I mean, because because to me, that's that's like a dream uh, to be able to travel all over the states, work with all different professionals, work with different people, 
help grow the game, work with juniors, work with, uh, you know, adults, um, just just a well-rounded fun all the time. I mean, it's got to be great to be Megan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm loving everything that I'm doing right now. It's so much fun. Um, but, you know, the big thing is that I'm, I'm so thankful to be at Belfair Plantation. I mean, they could not be more supportive of me. Since I've been back, I mean, they've really welcomed me back with open arms. And, you know, I, I didn't know if they would be understanding of my of my travels. And literally, I have had nothing but full-on support. And they're proud that I'm, you know, sharing my passion and with Aimpoint and everything with others. And, and they're all for it. So it's, it's really neat that they've uh, said, you know, that I'm welcome to come there as much as I need to and, and be based out of there, but they support and understand that that I have a, a really important mission to spread the word on on something I really believe in. Yeah, well, that's the other thing that's so fantastic about it, too, is that you have the best of both worlds. You have that home base, their understanding of that, and you can travel all over the place and gather more information uh, for yourself, learn with other professionals. Um, that just makes you so much more valuable when you come back to your home base, and that's probably why they're so supportive of that for you. Well, it's been great. I, I've been just so pleased to be back, and you know, every time I drive through the gates, I just, I just pinch myself. I feel so lucky to be there. Yeah, that's nice. You're a great inspiration. You really are. Thank you. And it's, it's great to have people like you on the show. Um, we're we're kind of just coming to the end. So um, so just give me one more of where are they going to get in touch with you. It is at Megan at Golf Pro. Megan Golf Pro. M-E-G-A-N Golf Pro. <laughs> awesome. And that's Twitter or Facebook. Uh, yeah, and then Facebook is just my first and last name, Megan Padua, P-A-D-U-A. Megan Padua. Great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thanks again, Megan. I wish you continued success. And I'm sure that um, you're probably going to end up being one of the youngest on the top 100 someday. Uh, because <laughs> well, that would, be a neat, that would be a neat accomplishment. But, you know, the way I look at it is that if we keep growing the game, all, all the right things will happen. And, and you know, our, our heart is in the right place. I mean, I know I, I see everything you're doing there. That, uh, you know, if we do it together, the, gra the, the, gra the game will grow. And uh, it, it's just such a, a neat thing to be a part of. So uh, I thank you so much, and let's keep growing the game. Yeah, we'll do it together. I appreciate Definitely. you. I appreciate you being on because that that really helps us be able to do that and to touch a lot more lives and and to uh, and to get people into the game that we uh, has given us so much back. And it's yeah. it's uh, so so whenever you can give back, it's a great thing. So, well, yeah, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. So until we meet again, what we say here at Breaking Par is try to keep it in the short grass. <laughs> thank you. All right, take care. I will.